This is Helix, a relatively new modal text editor that could be the definitive successor to Vim and NeoVim. So today, I will tell you my impressions using Helix from the point of view of a basic, non-expert user, and I will show you the main differences that it has when compared to NeoVim. And finally, I will tell you if I think that it can dethrone Vim and NeoVim. Helix comes with great features out of the box, and the first one I want to show you are the color schemes. By simply typing colon, theme, space, Helix will show me all the available themes, and I can use the tab key to browse through them. You don't need to install any extension to get these themes, they come built in with the editor. So this is already a big plus of Helix, because in Vim and NeoVim you would need to download and install these themes yourself, and the process is not precisely trivial. As of this recording, Helix comes with a total of 110 themes. What you are seeing is only the first page of themes, but as you can see now, uh, there are three pages in total. Another important feature that Helix comes with is multiple cursors. When editing a file in normal mode, you simply press Shift C and an additional cursor is added below the original cursor. And then you can edit the file. You can go into insert mode, for example, remove these uh, characters, change something, uh, go back into normal mode and press comma to remove the extra cursors. In Vim and NeoVim, you will need to install a plugin to get multiple cursors, so this is another win for Helix. I also really like this menu that shows up on some actions. For example, here I press G, which is the key to go to a certain point in the file. And Helix is showing me different places I may want to go to, including go to the top of the screen, go to bottom, and go to center. And I use these movements a lot for quick navigation in the file. There is also tree seeder, which creates a syntax tree of your source code and allows you to do things such as moving to the next function, moving to the previous function, or moving to different constructs in the programming language that you are using. This is another functionality that in Vim and NeoVim would need to be installed with a plugin. And the final feature I want to mention is LSP, or Language Server Protocol which will allow you to have autocomplete, as you can see on the screen, among other things. The setup is relatively easy. If you execute the Helix binary with the dash dash health flag, it will show you all the languages that it supports. And it will also tell you what you need to install in order to use the LSP for that language. In my case, I want to have LSP for the C language. So here, as you can see, Helix is telling me that I need to install Clang D. So I will install it using my distributions package manager. So now when I run Helix with the dash dash health flag, it will show me that the LSP is okay. Now I will open a C file using Helix. And let's, for example, uh, start typing a line here. As you can see, it's going to start suggesting me some uh, options to autocomplete. And now, if I delete an important line from this file, for example, this one, as you can see down here, Helix is telling me that there are two errors. If I press space and D, it will show me the, the errors that it has found. And as you can see, all we needed to do was installing Clang D. So installing an LSP in Helix is much easier than in other editors. In summary, Helix tries to create a good user experience out of the box, as opposed to other model text editors that are very bare bones and require the user to install plugins in order to get basic functionality. And in my opinion, the Helix approach is much better. One reason is time because with the Helix approach, you don't need to spend time learning how to use a plugin manager, then looking for plugins on the web, selecting them, and then installing them. But another important reason is the fact that all of these features are implemented by the same Helix developers, which means that the whole experience will feel cohesive and consistent. In Vim and NeoVim, if you start installing plugins, 
it sometimes may feel like you're just sticking things together with duct tape instead of creating a full, consistent editor experience. So that's why I prefer the Helix approach. But now I want to talk about other important differences that Helix has with Vim and NeoVim. And here is where I have some reservations and you may have them as well. The most fundamental difference is that Helix has a different text editing model. In Helix, you first select the text that you want to edit, and then you specify the action that you want to apply to that selection. For example, if I want to delete the current word, I first type W, which selects the current word, and then I type D to delete it. In Vim, you would do the opposite. You first say that you want to delete something, so you type D, and then you specify what you want to delete, in this case, W for word. These models are known as selection action and action selection, or object verb and verb object. The advantage of the Helix model is that you can see what you are deleting before you delete it, because selections are always visible. And this advantage is valid for all different actions, replacing text, yanking it, etc. However, it also means that every time you use a word motion, you also select the word that you move through. For example, let's say that I want to move my cursor to the end of this word, so I press W, and now my cursor is at the end of the word, but I have also selected the word. And if I go into insert mode now, by pressing I, my cursor will go all the way back to the beginning of the selection, not to the character that was just before the cursor. So if I execute a word motion, and then I want to go into insert mode just before the current character, I have to first deselect uh, the word by pressing semicolon. And now I can type I and I go into insert mode before the cursor. So, is the Helix model better than the Vim model? I am not entirely convinced by the Helix model, because I think it imposes a slightly higher mental load on the user. When using Helix, I feel like I have to be more aware and keep track of the selections that I make while editing text, for the reasons I mentioned before. The difference is not really big, but it's noticeable. It could be just because I haven't used Helix long enough to get used to it at an intuitive level. And maybe if I keep using it, the Helix selection model will become second nature to me. But even then, from the point of view of a NeoVim user, I don't know if being able to see the selections before the action is worth such an effort. So I don't really know if the Helix model is better than the Vim model. And now let's talk about configuration, because in general I like how Helix works in this aspect, but there is just one important thing that I really don't like about it. Helix looks for configuration files in .config slash Helix in our home directory, and as you can see, Helix uses the TomL language for configuration. The main configuration file is called config.toml. This is my config.toml. It's very simple. Here I enable automatic insertion of pairs to parentheses and brackets, and I also configure the, the mode indicator to change color when I change the mode. For example, if I go into insert mode, into insert mode, it changes the color. If I go into select, mode, it also changes color, etc. And there's a couple more uh, basic uh, configurations here. And in general, I like how this config file works. I like the fact that it's organized in sections and the fact that Helix configurations files are much shorter and more readable than Vim files written in Vim script. However, the thing that I really don't like is that configuring indentation width is more cumbersome than in Vim and NeoVim. For example, here I am editing a C file that has tabs as indentation, and these tabs appear as two characters wide, as you can see. I want to increase these tabs to look four characters wide. So, if you search in the web, you will find that there's currently no way to globally change the indentation width in Helix in a persistent way. You can only change the indentation for specific languages. For that, you need to create a file called languages.toml and define the configurations for your languages there. But even then, the Helix documentation doesn't explain which of these attributes need to be included in order for it to work. 
After some trial and error, I arrived at this configuration, which works for my purposes. So even though this was not that hard, I still felt that the Helix experience is bad in this aspect. You have to guess what attributes are needed and which ones are not. There is definitely some level of trial and error involved in order to configure even one language. Maybe I am missing something and I made a dumb mistake here, but even if that's the case, Helix didn't make it easy for me to do the right thing on the first try. So that's something I dislike about Helix configuration, and it's something that could be improved on both the functionality front and the documentation front. However, the good thing is that the rough edges of Helix, like this one, will probably be improved as Helix gains more adoption and continues progressing. And a final thing to mention, which may be a deal breaker for some of you, is that Helix doesn't support plugins yet. I personally don't care too much about it, because the features that come out of the box are sufficient for me. But some of you may have more advanced or specific needs when it comes to text editing, so this is a thing to note. However, the Helix team has plans to implement a plugin system. You can check the discussion section on their GitHub repo to get more information. And now, let's recap and see all of the pros and cons of Helix. Some of the pros are, first, the fact that Helix comes with a lot of functionality out of the box, like multiple cursors, tree seeder, color schemes, and the contextual menus that are of great help to remind you of the available key bindings and commands. The fact that Helix comes with all of this out of the box also makes it be more cohesive and consistent than other editors. The ease of installation of LSPs in Helix is also something notable when compared to Vim and NeoVim. And finally, the config files in Helix are much better, because they are usually much shorter and readable. In the cons, we can mention lack of plugin support, which is something that will get solved eventually, and some pain points like how hard it is to configure the indentation width, which I hope will also get solved at some point. There are also some important differences that I can't classify directly under the pros or the cons. So, the editing model in Helix is different from the editing model in Vim and NeoVim. Some people may prefer the Helix model, but for Vim users it's going to take some time before they get fully used to it. And I should also mention the fact that not all key bindings from Helix are the same as Vim, so that will also take some time to get used to. And the final question. Can Helix dethrone Vim and NeoVim? I think that two conditions need to be met in order for Helix to dethrone them. The first one is that Vim users have to be convinced that the selection action model is better or at least as good as the Vim model. Unfortunately, the only way for a Vim user to decide this is to use Helix for a relatively long time and get used to it. And I don't think most users are willing to do that. And the second condition is that Helix fixes some aspects of the editor that degrade the user experience, like the process for changing indentation width. I think Helix has a lot of potential and could eventually dethrone Vim and NeoVim if these conditions are met, but the first condition will take some considerable time. What is your opinion? Leave a comment below and if you liked the video, please like and subscribe. Goodbye.